Hello champions and future champions, hello chessmod family, GM Gabuzian is here with you and we're beginning our daily lesson. Today we have topic very important, often happening mistake for many chess players, giving up in some positions without checking all of options to survive. In other words, the topic is don't give up in drawish positions. This means when we have a lost position and seems like there are no chances, we are giving up. But sometimes in lost positions, because of some concrete tactical reasons or maybe mistake of opponent, we were getting chances to survive. Since already in our mind we gave up and we lost the game, we are not even paying attention to options in the game. Now in this position, when white is pawned down, we are having chances to survive, but white player gave up and this was a huge mistake. How to play here for white is my next question to you. Please pause the video and try to figure it out. At this moment we are missing a piece and as well break is threatening some discovered checks with the rook or if we are taking on c5 we are clearly accepting that we have peace down position. Suddenly. White's getting a super nice perpetual check resource. Rook f8 check, bishop f8. Now we're not on time to play knight f6 or knight h6 and create some mating threats because, as I mentioned, rook c1 check is hanging. Instead, we can accelerate this and play queen g8 beautiful move here. What's happening? We're taking opponent's king to the right spot. After king g8, if we now play knight f6, it's a big mistake, king h8 and we are losing, but in this position we have knight h6 check, controlling f7 square and checking opponent's king. Only available move is king h8 and we play knight f7. Now king g8 is the only move and after knight h6, white is surviving because of this perpetual check idea. This is a very nice example how to see all of the options, most probably I will recommend you pay attention to opponent's king weakness, some kind of perpetual check options, or maybe getting some stillmate ideas. Out of my experience, those are the conditions most often happening in these kind of situations, but I am not saying different type of ideas are not possible. Let's go ahead and see the next one. In this position, white is having two extra pawns, huge activity in the center, great pieces, most importantly our net on f7 is not protected at all. My question to you is the following, are we going to give up or find some chances to survive? Pause the video and think about it. First of all, if we are trying to give some checks to opponent's king which is very much naked, with queen b1 move right now, it's not working. The reason is concrete rook c1 move, throwing back our queen and capturing on f7 with a temple. For this reason, instead of giving up in this position, black plays rook e7 move, trying to distract white's queen from the c file. White was not supposed to take and go back playing something like queen c6, keeping advantage of two pawns, but already after this move, because of naked position of white's king, black can be getting some chances. After rook e7, it's not really working if white captures on e7. If you missed this idea previously, I offer you once again to pause the video and decide if black needs to give up here or we can survive it. It's happening, queen b1 check, and after a king f2, black player decided to give up. Because after a queen a2 check, which is the only one, since c2 and b2 squares are covered with white pieces, white is now playing knight b2, protecting all of the threats and taking everything on the king side, killing opponent's king. After king f2, giving up is a wrong decision. Suddenly black has a drawish option now, playing queen d3. It's a quiet moving position when we are missing a rook and as well after queen f7 and bishop g7, missing a knight as well. What's the thing that white king is naked as I mentioned couple of times. All of the pieces are far away from the king. 
And this is the motive. Opponent's king is naked, black is giving pieces, and let's check out the options. This position is to rage. If now queen g8 check, black goes king h6. Now this king is safe, and if it's black to move in this position, now we want to play queen e2 check, and after king g1, queen e1 check is leading to a perpetual. That's why after king h6, white needs to prevent these checks. But how to do this? If now white tries to go knight c3, we are playing queen d2 check. And what's the funny thing that after knight c3 white is even losing now. If king f1, we play bishop h3 check. Now after king g1, queen e1 is mating. If after bishop h3 check, white plays bishop g2, we can take with the bishop, king g1 and go bishop h3 again. Queen e1 and queen g2 are the mating threat. On top of this, if after queen d2 check, white plays king g1 again, bishop h3 now is winning even with the bishop on d5 staying alive. We threaten queen e1 and this is unstoppable. White needs to give away some pieces and already will be in trouble. As you can see, already in one variation after king h6, we are seeing logical move of white when they are even losing. Now we need to control the f1 square for white and most probably playing bishop c4. But after queen d2 check, king g1 and queen e1, black is finding a perpetual. King g2 and queen d2. This is a very nice example how to defend the lost position. Giving away some pieces, but chasing opponent king and eventually surviving. Let's now go ahead to another example, when we will see how one of the top players is giving up in a drawish position. This is a position for the black side, and it's a game of Gideon Isha's white against Shanklin Samuel. Now, black is missing a pawn, but it's not the problem. The problem is, knight on h3 is trapped, and white is going to take it. But there is another issue as well. For the white side. I offer you to decide whether we need to give up here for black or we're getting some chances. Please pause the video and make your decision. Black was thinking that here, after king g4 and h3, we're losing a piece and the king. But suddenly, there is king d6, and after king g4 and king d7, this endgame position is drawish. Here is the reason. When white captures king h3, we go king c8. And if we manage to go king b8 and to a8 squares, this will be a drawish because white is not having chances to break through. This example you can see in our endgame courses bishop versus pawn to understand better why this endgame is a drawish one. Also, now if white plays bishop f4, black is still holding a draw with king d7 mode. And this is the reason, if white is going closer with the king, let's say king g4, king c8, king f5, king d7, king f6, we are still playing king c8. This diagonal is covered, and once white is playing king e7, it's a still mate. Otherwise, there are no ideas to break through our defense. Once again, if you are a bit suspicious about it, check out our endgame course. Today we have seen few examples out of billion possibilities. We are getting lost positions sometimes and before giving up, let's think about some chances to survive. Perpetual check, opponent's king weakness, maybe a steel mate or some kind of theoretical drawish and game positions. What am I trying to summarize? That before giving up, try to figure out all of your chances and only then stop the clock. Because Chess game is not over until it's over. Let's now go ahead and you will get your homework for this topic. This is a game of Magnus Carlsen is white against Topalo Veselin, another top level game. White here played queen g6 and because of some threats like queen h7 and queen h8 check, black decided to give up. Was it the best decision is my question to you. And you can share your thoughts and ideas in the comments section below. Jim Gabuzian was here with you. Thank you for your subscriptions, likes and sharing this video with your friends. We appreciate it a lot. See you next time. 
during our next daily lessons.